15. Oh, we got some others coming down too. Uh, the last couple days they've had some classroom things and it culminates with a, a practical hands-on scenario. All right, legs are on. We have them suiting up in the level A and level B suits that are completely different. We have much more technical equipment, air monitoring equipment. We have uh, GCMS that we can test things and determine exactly what's in it. Oh, 3,800? Uh, very specific monitors that we use that we don't normally use in regular firefighting. Uh, it's difficult, there's no dexterity, it's extremely sweaty, it's, you can't hear anything or anyone, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty laborious. We have a wider uh, arrangement of, of different suits from a, a level A which is a fully encapsulating balloon around you for all intents and purposes. It protects from just about any chemical imaginable, a vast majority of them, all the way down to just simple splash protection suits that you might see on, on some TV show, people working in a lab, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Hazardous materials can happen anywhere in our, our city. Boise Fire is also the regional response team that covers a number of counties in, here in the state of Idaho. There's very little wind, there's very little slope. We're very fortunate. We don't have a lot of, of city or regional responses, but this is to help prepare them for the time that we do. The wind's on our back. If you were to use something as, a, an, ex, as an example locally, they have some sort of hazardous spill. We're going to be there involved in, in that type of incident, places that have gas supplies of acetylene and things like that. If there, something is wrong with their production, it can cause problems. It turns it into a hazmat operation that we may have to go in and, and mitigate any sort of hazards to keep the, the emergency part of it to a minimum, and then cleanup is dealt with at a, at a later time. I mean, then you got to reevaluate a lot of problems. I know for this one, there's a hole here. So Knowing when to go in and when not to is probably the biggest one. You never know exactly what's going on until you get there. We cannot go in there until we have enough personnel to make sure that we have an entry team, a backup team, and all the, the rescue components in place. All the equipment has to be laid out and ready to go. There are certain things that are just so hazardous we can't do anything about except let them sit and let time deal with it. Mostly his hands, but look at the whole front of him. That's going to be your primary zone. You need to do the whole thing. As a first responding engine company, our guys only have a certain amount of equipment and we try to make sure that they're trained to a point where they know enough to stay out when they should. Uh, we do annual refresher in addition to what they learn in the academy just so that they keep up on all the information and procedures that, that we perform throughout our time on the job here. And when they call upon us, we have to be trained in a little of everything and know how to tell people where to go, what to do, and make sure that we keep ourselves safe and that's what keeps the citizens safe. It's stuff we have to do. We are, we're actually mandated for some of this training, but we take, we'd like to take it a little bit further than the actual minimum mandate just so that our guys are as safe as they possibly can be to provide the best service to the citizens of Boise.